break it. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, And then no, no, no. come back. So we're going to switch hats to S254. Qualified immunity. Oh, boy, she said. Yeah. Well, it's fun. I'll be in back in the same room. It is. It is. It is. I, well, I have missed it. It's so much. It is. So, what I'm going to do is, oh my God. I'm going to take the easy way out. And this, then, you, we have, you should have in your file on qualified immunity a redraft. Yes. Um, dated 310 at 9.51 a.m. Uh, <laughs> nice. Okay. Is that great? Right. Uh, this one's at 830. 830? Yeah, so there's draft 3.1, which I just submitted this morning. Okay. Um, but there's also draft. I'm sorry. Yep. All right. I'm going to have support then put this up. I'd like to explain what I'm trying to do. <laughs> um, now it's become clear to me that with the amount of time that we have and given the efforts in the last few years to improve fair and impartial policing policies, on the use of force and guidelines, improved police officer training, universal body cameras. Uh, I still support the idea of the elimination of qualified immunity, but it's clear to me that to try to do that this year is next to impossible. Given the length of time we've had in committee, um, even though we've had extensive discussion, um, some say that we're, you know, what I've heard is the way we do it now has worked well. Always in suits settled by the various departments in this state. We don't have all good information about those, but we do know that um, there have been a lot of settlements. Uh, I'm, it's a controversial tough subject, and I believe we need to get it right. And as a citizen legislature, we deal with a lot of different issues, just like the one just previously. On this end, I think we need to get beyond the back and forth of the lawyers from each side by commissioning an independent report on the state of Vermont qualified immunity law and how it's working now. I don't think we have to have a study, but what I really am lacking is when I hear from one side, oh no, they do, they do have it. It's like my argument with my town manager in Bennington. Well, they already have access to the suit. Look at all the settlements we've had. Well, yeah, but what, you know, what about the other cases? And, and so I hear from the other side. Um, so I've been working with Ben to try to craft something. The other thing I heard was there is some doubt about Zulu and whether it covers municipal employees, municipal police and uh, covers um, sheriffs. Uh, we know it covers uh, state troopers. That was clear. So what this attempts to do, a draft what 3.1 attempts to do, is say it's our intent that Zulu covers all municipal and all law enforcement in the state. So that the current state of affairs is not a question. And we can argue about the decision, we will. Um, and it also contains not a study, but a report. And Ben can go over the report that he and I have looked out. Uh, it's a report on the access to justice. Um, and 
qualified immunity. And we're hopeful that he would get assistance from uh, various groups that have been here on both sides, as well as uh, it looks like a project that might be right for the uh, Center for Justice Reform at the Vermont Law School. So this, I think, I mean, I realize that the proponents of the bill will not be happy. And I realize that the opponents may not be completely happy that the issue is still out there. But for me anyway, we need to understand is, does Vermont have a problem? You know, we look at no, not warrant, no, not warrants. And this committee determined that it was not necessary to change that law based upon the testimony. It was clear from both sides. This one hasn't been that way. And I'd like to get some clarity. And if we don't have a problem, then we should, then we don't need to change it. But if we do have a problem, as I suspect we do, then I'd like a little bit of a better basis. And I really want to thank Ben, who has <laughs> been over backwards with me on this issue and done some tremendous work. I don't know where we'd be without Ben. Um, you know, listening to both sides, uh, but this is what we've come up with. So I'll let Ben read it over, then we'll take a break at 10, come back and talk a little bit about it for about a half an hour and see if there's something that the committee can buy into. I want to share my screen. While you're bringing it up, can I make a, a yeah. suggestion on lines uh, 14 and 15, where it says against any Vermont state, county, or municipal law enforcement officer? I think it should be all certified law enforcement officers because they're like UVM has a its own um, their its own agency, and so this wouldn't cover. Yeah. The, it should be all certified law enforcement officers in the state, regardless of who they. Are you the officer certified? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. You should see what they have in their trunks. <laughs> I walked by one of the UVM police cars with the trunk open, and it was like an arsenal. What's that? They right? have a lot of riot stuff in there. Yeah, he was yeah. just bringing that to donate to Ukraine's efforts. <laughs> but any, anyway, just so that it makes sure that, and I, there might be one or two other kind of Quasi possible. Well, yeah, and yeah. any certified law enforcement officer. Yeah, just a suggestion. Okay. Good idea. Um, start hiring them. So go ahead. Ben. No, no, they can't. So this is uh, so Ben Obergrosky for the Office of Legislative Council. We're looking at Draft 3.1 of the Strike Call Amendment to S254. Uh, this is uh, almost completely new compared to the last version. Um, it still creates under Section One a new Chapter 190 under Title 12. Um, this is now termed, though, violations of Article 11 of the Vermont Constitution by law enforcement. It creates a new Section 5607 entitled Standard to Recover Debt Damages. And Subsection A is essentially intended to codify the Zulo standard. Um, and as, as Senator White said, to make sure it applies to all Vermont law, certified law enforcement officers for violations of Article 11 of the Constitution of the State of Vermont. And that is the search and seizure provision. So this would cover roadside stops, anything seized during those stops, trying to uh, you know, arrest uh, of, of individuals. Um, so any potential violations that would come out of those types of interactions. Um, and, and again, this is, just to make it clear that this is the standard and it was espoused in Zulo and to make it uniform across the board for all law enforcement officers for Article 11 violations, which again is what uh, the Zulo, uh, uh, the holding in Zulo uh, concern was an Article 11 violation. Um, it does say that the common law uh, under subsection B uh, the common law defense of qualified immunity shall not be a bar to any action seeking damages brought against a law enforcement officer for a violation of Article 11. And that's because under Zulo, it's a burden that the plaintiff must prove to obtain damages and a limiting uh, uh, analysis 
that the court undertakes. So it's just to make sure that it's in concert and that qualified immunity is not bar to uh, that new burden that the plaintiff must prove on this as well. Can I just stop you? That line, correct me if I'm wrong, but my memory says that line is taken exactly from the Zumo case. Um, I don't, uh, I can't recall at the moment if it's a direct quote. Um, and you're talking about subsection B. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my intent was to capture it as closely as possible. Um, and really just to reference. I just want to, this is a good place to say this. When the bill began, it was creating a new right of action expanding what Zulu had already put in place to cover all certified law enforcement officers, as opposed to just state police troopers. Correct. That is what I understand now is the intent of the bill. Correct. Yeah, brilliant move on your part. Just like, thank you. No, it, it, it is. It's a good, it, that's my I think there was, anyway, I won't go um, and, and moving on to what would now be new section 5608. This is a record of case disposition. Um, this was the old section 5610 of um, version 2.1. And this is the one where all judgments and settlements that an agency would pay um, must be maintained, um, which would include a copy of the underlying complaint. And it would be subject to public disclosure um, unless an exemption under the Public Records Act applied. Um, but uh, any record that would be disclosed would include the name of the law enforcement agency and any uh, monetary amount paid under the judgment or settlement. Um, and then there's language that would ensure that all personally identifiable information contained in judgment or settlement uh, shall be redacted prior to, to disclosure. Um, and this is uh, an effort to make sure uh, to really track what's going on in Vermont uh, with law enforcement agencies and, and these claims, um, and also to ensure that uh, you know people that are in, included in the, uh, in, in the in the cases, uh, you know, their information is not necessarily disclosed. So, so next question too. So yeah. does does the officer's name is the officer's name disclosed? Uh, it would be all personally identifiable information. That would be so. The officer's name would be included within that. So it would not be. Disclose that's the intent of this. Oh, the officer's name would not be disclosed. Right. It's just as well part. as the person. Well, I, you read in the paper that there was a settlement reached, for example, with former Representative Morris and her family. Yeah. And it tells us the amount. Yeah. But most of, but many of these settlements are privately, are privately, privately, and we don't know they exist. And people are saying, well, yes, yeah. they, they are already getting the settlements. They already have access to justice. Well, how many of them are there? What's what's this would just give yeah. people the ability without divulging the name of the officer or or the, the name of the person. So the name of the person in the case of the former representative Morris and her family that was made public by them. Yeah. And then it okay. even though everything is redacted, yeah, people in, know. If for people know if there's a suit against the um Brattleboro Police Department. Yeah, but but I think this is good yeah. the way this is written. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what we're interested, what I'm interested in, and hopefully the committee is, is what is the current status of so mm -hmm. how many of them are there? Mm -hmm. We got such conflicting information mm -hmm. from both sides on this. Yeah. We're moving on to section two. This is the report that Senator Sears discussed, and it's the report on access to civil justice remedies and law enforcement qualified immunity in Vermont. Uh, what this does is essentially uh, the Office of Legislative Council by November 15th of this year would produce a report um, uh, to the Senate Committee on Judiciary, the House Committee on Judiciary, and the Joint Legislative Justice Oversight Committee concerning the impact of the doctrine of qualified immunity on access to civil justice remedies for people wrongfully harmed by bad faith policing and violations of civil rights in the state of Vermont. In report, or in particular, the report shall identify one, the origins of the doctrine of qualified immunity and its present interpretation by the state courts of Vermont. Two, 
existing constitutional, statutory, and common law causes of action for addressing the alleged misconduct of Vermont law enforcement under Vermont law. Three, existing immunities from suit concerning allegations of Vermont law enforcement misconduct under Vermont law. Existing defenses to liability concerning allegations of Vermont law enforcement misconduct under Vermont law. Existing statutory and common law limitations on damages. Uh, and the applicability of the doctrine of qualified immunity to Vermont state level law enforcement officers, county level law enforcement officers, and municipal law enforcement yeah. officers. Um, just on that last number six. So on page one, or I'm sorry, on page two, no, page one at the bottom, subsection B, um, we're, we're removing qualified immunity and violations of Article 11. So is number six in the report meant to um, talk about what remains for applicability? Uh, essentially, yes, because that would just be for um, in, the, in the previous section for Article 11 violations, yep. but it can apply in other situations. And, and I think the intent behind this is to give the committee, all the committees that would receive the report, the fullest picture possible of what the state of the law is in Vermont. Um, just to to analyze and see if there's any action to be had going forward, because it could be it could be clarified to say the applicability of the doctrine um, exclusive of violations of um, Article 11. But I understand that's what it means. And and to your points in a way that from before, I, I can change this to just say all certified law enforcement officers in the state. Um, and then subsection B, uh, would, that the Office of Legislative Counsel uh, should have the administrative technical and legal assistance of the Attorney General's Office, the Defender General's Office, the Central Center of Justice Reform at BLS, and any other stakeholders interested in assisting with the report. But, there's something to be said about a compromise that everybody hates and everybody loves. Yeah. Well, it's been one of the most difficult bills I was explaining to a reporter yesterday. <laughs> well, I think of the three that I, some of the more difficult bills that I've dealt with. One was civil unions that chair of this committee. And the Supreme Court has said we had to act. So we didn't have a choice, really. The other was Act 60, which was the big the decision. Uh, I can't remember her name. Um, a little girl from a town in Madison County. But anyway, that that was another, you know, the Supreme Court said you had to act. In this case, Nobody said you had to act. And it's been difficult because of the very um, emotional and honest disagreements on both sides. Uh, I, you know, I, I remain in awe and deep respect of the folks from ACLU, the Jay Diaz, the, the folks from. Uh, the BIPOC community who have spoken out clearly in favor. I also, you know, have a great deal of respect for Commissioner Shirley and other members of the Department of Public Safety, Matt Birmingham, and the state troopers. So I'm hopeful that this will at least allow Vermont to look at this in a different light, um, but also make sure that it's clear. I suspect that the Supreme Court would, if their case came up, but to make it clear that Zulu applies to all law enforcement in the state. Mm -hmm. so, I'm happy to hear from folks in a few minutes, but it ought to be brief because we basically have a half an hour to deal with it. We'll get back here at 10 15.